When from the north a warrior comes with hair like scarlet flame, the hills shall rumble like beaten drums, a woman shall speak a name, and fire shall burn as the folk return to the hills from whence they came. Eh, as far as prophecies go, I give it a 6 out of 10. Our story begins in the dead of night, with Sonia only narrowly managing to escape from a Zamoran border fort after being framed for the death of its captain, Voss, by the fort's lieutenant, a man named Keldum. Sonia herself flees upon her horse into the wastelands east of the nation of Zamora, a harsh grassland broken up by hills and mountains and not much else. She is pursued, naturally, by Keldum himself, alongside a small company of soldiers and mercenaries. Among these men, those of note include Gevim, Keldum's right-hand man and confidant, and Peth, one of the mercenaries and a mystic who consults bones. And while Keldum can claim to his men all he likes that he pursues Sonia for justice, in truth, he hunts her out of ambitious lust and greed. He killed Captain Voss himself, desiring to take control of the fort, and now he hunts the red-haired swordswoman across the wastes, seeking to make her his grand prize. Some three days pass before Sonia spots the lights of a city to the south, which is strange considering how isolated this land is. After all, there's really not much around, just grass and hills. This city, surrounded by walls, is Elkad and, exhausted and seeing few options, Sonia decides to request entry. As she approaches the city gates, she is shocked to discover bodies, those of women tied to posts and left to bleed to death. After she gains entrance to the city, Sonia learns from Sobat, the city's guard commander, that these women were sacrificed to appease the earth folk, the spirits, or perhaps monsters, that reside in the lands beyond Elkad. Dismissive of such needless sacrifices, but too tired to press the issue, Sonia holds up in the stables for the night, getting the first good sleep for some days now. Yet, in the darkness, out beyond the city walls, the approaching riders of Keldum's party were not the only threat. The voices of the Earthfolk called out, waiting and hungering. The next morning was as chaotic for Sonia as her initial escape from the border fort. Invited by Sobat to the garrison for breakfast, Sonia quickly found herself in a fight when some of the soldiers mocked and antagonized her. Blades were drawn and Sonia had slain two of Elkad's warriors before the arrival of Hefei, the city's mistress, and her court wizard Mophis. Sonia, alongside Sobat, was in the process of explaining the fight to Hefei when, suddenly, Gevim arrives, having split off from Keldum's party and approaching Elkad by himself. Gevim accuses Sonia of murder in front of the assembling crowd and, before the red-haired warrior could so much as raise a blade in her defense, the wizard Mophis works his magic and Sonia's world fades to black. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Elkad, one of the temple maidens, a young girl named Tiamu, was in distress. At only 15 years old, Tiamu, named after a star of some significance to the city's culture, was deeply bothered by the rate of sacrifices made to the earth folk, and she was worried that she might be next. Hearing of Red Sonia's capture, Tiamu was reminded of an old tale a prophecy laid down by a prophet named Muthsa, who spoke of a red-haired warrior from the north. Convinced that Sonia was this warrior of prophecy, Tiamu convinces her friend Sost, one of the apprentice priests at the temple, to cover for her while she visits the dungeons. 
and Tiamu visits Red Sonia and helps the Hyrcanian escape her cell after Sonia slays the guard. Using a hidden passage, the two make their way up to the surface, where Sonia gathers supplies and a horse, then flees the city to the north. Tiamu, though terrified, elects for now to stay behind, hoping that merely freeing Sonia would be enough to deal with the Earth Folk. Naturally, the city is in a bit of an uproar over Sonia's escape. Sobat, the guard commander from earlier, actually manages to infer that Tiamu is the one who freed the Hyrcanian, thanks to a scrap of cloth left behind in the dungeon that could only belong to a temple virgin. Sobat confronts Tiamu but insists that he is a friend to Sonia and says that they will talk more later. Unfortunately, before this conversation can happen, Sobat is slain. Gavim, who had been spying on him, convinces Sobat to follow him into an isolated area, then kills the commander with a blow to the head, pushing his body off a balcony to be discovered later. Gavim, who is every bit as depraved and monstrous as his commander Keldum, confronts Tiamu, assaulting and interrogating her to learn where Red Sonia fled to before knocking the girl unconscious. When Tiamu awoke, she was absolutely overcome with rage and grief, upset at what happened, how Gavim had defiled her and convinced that she had sent Sonia to her death. Tiamu gathered what few things she could and departed, heading north into what she believed was certain doom. It does not take long for Keldum's full company to approach the city walls and be let inside. While Heifei is reluctant to let such a force within her city, she weighs her options and reasons that it would be better to let the Zamorans in and deal with them more discreetly, a mistake that she would soon come to regret. Meanwhile, Sonia had made her way up to the mountains in the north, where she encounters a strange hermit, a wizard and sorcerer, the man Sarib, who was known to the people of Elkad as the god Zaratha, though he himself denied any divinity. To Sonia, Sorib divulged his own history as well as the history of the Earthfolk, strange spirits that descended from the sky long ago and how the people in Elkad depraved even then, were all too eager to offer up sacrifices to appease these things. Sarab explained that the Earthfolk were in truth contained long ago, bound by magical spells that he now oversaw, and that the sacrifices of Elkad were little more effective than wishing on the wind. Sarab lamented the state of the city and, to Sonia, confessed his desire to see it destroyed. It's around this time that Tiamu arrives, miserable, and tells Sonia what happened to her, crying all the while. Down in Elkand, Heifei sprung her trap, attempting to kill Keldum and his men, though failing miserably and losing many soldiers in the process. Her right hand, Mophis, died as well in a completely unrelated confrontation. Peth, the mystic, had gone to Mophis, seeking to learn of Sarab's location for his own purposes, and was attacked by the wizard in response. Peth kills Mophis with ease, then confronts his spirit for answers before departing. After gaining control of the situation, Keldum takes a small detachment of men, as well as Heifei as a captive, along with him, setting off to pursue Sonia into the north. This company eventually comes into confrontation, not with Sonia herself, but with Sarib, who uses sorcery to sunder them all, slaying several and crippling more. Keldum was forced to retreat, but he only relented when he heard the voice of the sorcerer promise that, should he return the next day at sunset alone, then Sarib would not hinder him. A few things then happen in a relatively short amount of time. Keldum's company returns to Elkad with a bit of fuss at the gates. Heifei is poisoned to death by one of her priests, who saw opportunity in her death, and Sost, the friend of Tiamu, learns a bit of the Earthfolk himself, of their origins from the stars, and he's visited by a vision of Zaratha, who instructs the youth on what to do next, and 
to deliver a message to Sarib when he can. Meanwhile, Sarib himself and Red Sonia discuss a few things up in the cave, such as the depravity of Alcad and the nature of the human soul, as well as the concept of true spirits, those precious few people who possess the spark of greatness. Sarib speaks at length on this subject, but also on the burden and the choice laid before him. To destroy Alcad or not? Ultimately, the sorcerer elects to be done with the city in the valley. Using his magic, Sorib awakens Tiamu early the next morning, planting wisdom in her mind of powerful magical words and compelling her to take his wand and return to the city. Convinced by Sorib's magic as well as her own desire for vengeance, Tiamu departed becoming in essence an emissary of doom, even while the city tore itself apart as the people of Elkad and the soldiers of Zamora battled. Around this time, Keldum has followed through on his plans, returning to Sarib's cave to confront Sonia yet again. True to his word, the sorcerer did not intervene while the two clashed, but he did not need to end. In fact, their battle was the final piece of his plan. As night began to descend, Keldum and Sonya locked blades, and while Keldum himself briefly held the upper hand, he was ultimately no match for Sonya's skill and ferocity, and he ends up losing his head to her blade. This, as it were, was the last thing Sarab required, the sacrifice of a true spirit for that was what Keldum was, to appease the binds that held the earth folk. The spirits are released, flying forth in a maelstrom of crimson from Sarb's cave and down the mountainside, collecting the blood from Keldum's corpse and his head as they pass. This scene is, incidentally, what is being depicted on the cover art. I'm so glad that this is an actual event in the book because it is just odd to look at. These spirits, the Earth Folk, ravaged the entirety of Elkad, destroying all and consuming both blood and soul in a night of devastation before departing upward, returning to the stars. Only a handful survived the night. Sonia, Peth, who was beyond the city gates when the spirits descended, Tiamu and Sost, who were protected by the power of the wand, and Sarib himself, though the sorcerer nearly lost his life in freeing the Earth Folk. The book ends shortly thereafter with Sost delivering Zaratha's message to Sarnib, Peth becoming the sorcerer's apprentice, and all of them sharing a brief meal together before Sonya herself departs, heading onwards to her next adventure. As far as second installments in a book series go, Demon Knight is a fine story, and it showcases even more of the world Red Sonia finds herself in. We learn that the sorceress and demonic forces at work here come from more than just the hells. Some descended from the heavens, a concept which will be visited again later on in this series. We see a bit more of Sonya's violent temper at play here. Sure, in the ring of Akribu, she did slay a man near the beginning for mocking her, but that was only after he pressed her with blade. Here, it seems that she's almost raring to cut down anyone who insults her, though being tired from three days of fleeing on horseback may have had a role to play there. This is also the first story in the series where sorcery is, more often than not, on Red Sonia's side, with Sareb being an ally to the warrior for most of the book. In the sword and sorcery genre, magic and those who wield it are usually depicted as unrepentantly evil, and that's true often enough in this series as well, but here in Demon Knight, we have an example of someone who uses their magic, well, not necessarily for good, but on the side of the protagonist. Make no mistake, Sorab does manipulate Sonya into slaying Keldum so that the Earthfolk can be released onto Elkad. As vile as the city was, 
He did ultimately use sorcery to end it. Still, Sarab is at all times on Sonya's side and did seem to care not just for her, but for Tiamu as well, who he seemed to deeply regret getting involved in his schemes. Demon Knight does not tie in to the Ring of Akribu at all, so far as I can tell. There are no overt callbacks that I remember reading, and the story itself is largely contained to Elkad and Sarb's cave. This will be a recurring theme throughout the rest of the books, with each being a largely standalone story. I'm simply mentioning it here to get it out of the way, but these are all part of the same continuity, and I'll be talking about callbacks in future installments when they happen. Overall, just like The Ring of Akribu, Demon Knight is an enjoyable, quick read, and a story I highly recommend for anyone interested in the genre or the stories of Red Sonia. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, then please leave a like or share this video with a friend. If you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell, then you'll be alerted whenever I upload new videos. And of course, if you want to support me directly, head on over to Patreon. Patrons keep the channel alive with their donations and in turn get early access to my content. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.